This is Twit. All right, so let's uh, let's take a trip back in time. Do you remember 1998? That was the release year of the classic Nintendo 64 game, Legend of Zelda: The Ocarina of Time. If you thought you've seen everything from that game, well, think again. We're going to kind of talk a little bit about what you might not have seen. Uh, our guest has a background in putting his Tazbot creation, that's the tool-assisted speedrun robot to work on games like this, to open up and create new and unseen secrets hiding within the game and maybe beyond that as well. Alan Cecil showed off these accomplishments at this year's Awesome Games Done Quick, and he's done that many times before. Welcome back to the show, Alan. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. I go by Duango AC online, so if you're confused about that's the right. name, that's why. <laughs> Sorry, I see you're you're my you're also my friend, so I know I know you outside <laughs> of Tazbot stuff. So there you go. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. So first I of all, also, set the stage. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do, oh, sorry. I also am Alan Cecil when I'm presenting as part of Bishop Fox, which is my actual employer. So the two identities do tend to merge. It happens. Okay. All right. For a second, I was like, oh, no, maybe I shouldn't have called him by his full name. Uh, it's okay. So first of all, set, set the stage a little bit. Talk about the uh, Tazbot setup that's driving this experience. I'm assuming it's very similar uh, in, in many ways to the Tazbot that you've used you know, on other consoles. This isn't the first time you've used this on the Nintendo 64. But for people who are unfamiliar with it, what is it? So Taskbot here is my little companion. This was built by a team of folks here. You can see that we have a brand new Aww. form for him. He is very pretty and very svelte. Uh, this is our mascot, and we use him to play video games perfectly at Games Done Quick and other charity events. So think of it like a player piano. You have someone who composed a song in advance. That then gets put on paper roll. That paper roll is then sent through a player piano, and it plays a song from start to finish. What we're doing with Taskbot is taking a tool-assisted speedrun, often coming from a place like taskvideos.org. We're then preparing that movie file, or that, that series of button presses, and we're having Taskbot play it back on an original console just by plugging into the controller ports. So that's kind of what's going on here. The charity part is a little bit more interesting. So tell me a little bit about that because, and by the way, I, I'm smiling because I saw uh, Tazbot's eyes light up as if it knows we're talking about it. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the charity side of things. So these are often done at places like Games Done Quick. You can go to gamesdonequick.com and see their particular charity focus. They are really the founders of the concept of these types of speedrun events. It's one person after another playing a video game as fast as they possibly can. Well, viewers at home or watching on Twitch, usually they're able to watch for free, but they can donate for various incentives, whether that's having a player play with a blindfold on, having them play with only one hand on the controller. There's a lot of interesting things that uh, you can see at these Games Done Quick events. The most recent Games Done Quick event was held in Minnesota just a few weeks ago and helped raise over $3 million for Dr. Zell at Borders just from people donating for incentives and various prizes. Nice. That is so cool. I love that you're doing that. Uh, and and what, a, what an, uh, a gift and an accomplishment to be able to take something that you are passionate about and then be able to impact uh, change, essentially, and, and be able to bring value to places of the world that need it. So um, so tell us a little bit about what you showed off, because this is a big deal. People are reacting pretty strongly to uh, some of this stuff. It all kind of hinges around this idea of arbitrary code execution, um, you know, and as you mentioned, kind of uh, putting this data through the controller ports. What exactly is arbitrary code execution and how how are you using it here? How far are you pushing it? Okay, so there's a couple of things that we can do. Normally, in a tool-assisted speedrun, you're just playing the game perfectly. You're just trying to play from the start of the game to the end as fast as you possibly can. But when you have the ability to use an emulator ahead of time, you can find glitches. And this is where kind of where my day job comes into play. I'm a security consultant with Bishop Fox. My job is to find exploits, vulnerabilities, glitches, and take advantage of them. We do the same thing to video games. So... Classically, we had done this in the past for uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. We found a glitch yep. that allowed us to gain control of the game and then the console, and we added custom content where we had a different message at the end. We had different effects that Mario was able to have that would not normally have been in the game. All kinds of things are possible. And the thing about arbitrary code execution is it means it really is arbitrary. Once we gain access to take over the console, 
we could completely stop the game and play something different, or we can augment it, which is more what we did here. Yeah, you made a lot of uh, made a lot of creations within. Um, I'm fascinated by this idea of like discovering glitches and everything. I think that's a whole other topic, uh, but that's obviously what you uh, what what you do for a living and everything. But I'm very interested in how you even find those to begin with. But let's let's go down the road of these kind of cool creations that you were able to do as a result of this. And and by the way, I should also point out there is a the the full event is streamed. You can find it uh, on YouTube. Uh, the I think it's like an hour long, and it's a lot of fun to watch along. There is also kind of a, a cut down, kind of like a highlights reel uh, that can be found there as well. Uh, so it, so a lot of these things uh, that you know that were created, discovered, whatever, are all presented there um, for people to watch. What's the what's the one creation that you were most proud of? Uh, that you were most delighted by? Well, let's quickly get to how we did the creation. So in sure. this particular game, uh, we weren't able to use a tool assisted speedrun from start to finish. We needed a human runner in the form of Save State. They are a fantastic speedrunner of Ocarina of Time. We needed them to be able to play the game, as you just saw on screen, to get through the rupee route and various other, th other things. Because of how the Nintendo 64 pulls the controllers, we don't get consistent behavior. So Save State played the game themselves, we used an arbitrary code execution glitch that was, we call it in the community, we call it stale reference manipulation, but uh, in the traditional sense, it would be a use after free exploit. That allowed us to take Link's angle of how, where he was facing, along with the angle of where a rock, an object that happened to be stored, uh, was. Uh, that's kind of a miss, miss uh, w not exactly the right way to phrase it, I'm glossing over a lot of details, but basically we're picking yeah, up this sure. rock that you see right here, and that object will point to a different object in memory after we do a series of glitches. That allows us to jump to the controller ports as the code to execute. And the tricky thing here that is different than most other content we've done in the past, we briefly had, had Taskbot connected to all four controller ports, but then we disconnected controller port one and handed control back to save state, who continued to play while Taskbot wrote custom content directly into the expansion pack memory. Expansion memory That's pack. So, so cool. that allowed us to create entirely new scenes. So your question was, what was I happiest about being able to create? I was just happy we were able to create anything in the first place at all because the <laughs> yeah. process of doing it was really incredible. Uh, but really answering your question, uh, I don't want to spoil the ending if you haven't seen this. So yeah. I, think, I think I will just pick one thing. We use the ability to connect over the controller ports to allow people to connect by Twitch chat. So they were typing in Twitch chat and they were able to type a specific message of here together. I'll, I'll at least spoil that part. That one was the, the pivotal moment that made everyone cry uh, because we had gone through this pandemic of two and a half years and not being able to connect with anyone. Summer Games Unquick 2022 was the first in-person event where we could, could be together with Doctors Without Borders representatives there on site, 1,500 people, all masked, <laughs> all very safe, but we were able to come together at least for us, but there were still 150,000 people or some odd watching online that couldn't participate in person. And this gave them an opportunity to type here together and see their message appear on screen in the game in a way that was so deeply moving that it will forever be possibly our magnum opus, our best thing we've ever been able to do or could ever do. So it's very impactful. <laughs> that is, that's super impactful. I love it. And I, and I highly recommend y'all go and check check the video there's a lot of really cool kind of um kind of easter eggs and and different directions that it goes it was it's very delightful and that that moment obviously uh as you described it is perfect uh pretty awesome stuff um how so so along those lines how have tazbot fans reacted to what you've created here so first of all extremely positively in part because there were over 25 people that spent over two and a half years working on this since the discovery of arbitrary code execution in the game Ocarina of Time. A large group of people have worked on it, but relatively in secret. Those 25 people didn't really talk about what was going on. So this was a huge surprise even to people inside of the Taskbot community that I lead. A lot of people didn't know this was happening. So uh, that response has been extraordinary. I think this is, uh, this is the thing that I can point back to and say, there really weren't any major mistakes. This was mm. so amazing. So yeah, I, I, I can't even pick just one thing, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about the social impact of Here Together. So 
Oh, man, there's two things. First of all, there's a social impact of the run itself. Uh, to get it shown at Games Done Quick, uh, Summer Games Done Quick, donors had to donate to reach a $225,000 goal. And they far surpassed that. Uh, there were T-shirt sales that had Taskbot on it that also had $5 from every shirt going to Doctors Without Orders. That did extraordinarily well as well. Uh, at this point, uh, I, I'm just so astounded at how much people's heart was, how many people just poured out their hearts and their wallets, for that matter, to Doctors of the Borders to make this run happen. So that part was socially very impactful. Um, yeah. The Here Together part, as I touched on earlier, I think th the real reason that it was so uh, so touching is because it was the culmination of an entire video. As you alluded to, we didn't just do Here Together. We started very small by showing beta elements in the cartridge, things like an R-wing flying around. Inside mm -hmm. of this US 1.0 original release cartridge is an R-Wing from Star Fox 64. It was just in the cartridge. The developers left it there. They probably used it to test a targeting system. Uh, but we start there, and then we start building in other beta content element while lacing in our own creativity. We created an entirely new boss battle where you get to actually beat the running man. You should watch this and, and understand the... <laughs> <laughs> the hilarity of that sentence when you see it. Um, so there's so many different things that led up to that, but I'm not quite sure that was your question. No, 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 no. But I, I think you've done a good job uh, illustrating just like how impactful this is for so many different reasons. Now, one thing, uh, one thing that is of note is that there is a GitHub repository uh, for the code. So, and, but I, but I know not everybody's going to have that cute little robot behind you, but does that mean that anybody can recreate what they've seen, uh, in this video, no. what you showed off? No, sadly, because we, here, I'll phrase it this way. I have an infinite NES lives board. This isn't an ad, but this is just a really cool device. This infinite NES lives retro uh, device allowed me to basically dump the contents of my own cartridge. And that allowed me to then work with the rest of the team uh, to develop all of the things that you saw. We incorporated Blender to do camera movements. We put all of that code on GitHub. So if you go to the GitHub repo that's linked from gittriforce.link, you can find this GitHub repo and you can get, get the assets that allowed us or the tooling that allowed us to use Blender to create camera movements inside of Ocarina of Time. What we can't release is anything that touched Nintendo's property because we don't want mm. to distribute content. And just a spoiler, we put another game inside of Ocarina of Time, effectively. <laughs> um, another Nintendo property. And as a result, all of that content, we can't really distribute. So when you go to the GitHub, you might be sorely disappointed because we have it there. You could build it, but it won't be, it just won't be complete. We would really love a way to release this, but uh, we found that their lawyers don't have a real great sense of humor. Yeah, you got to be really careful with that for sure, obviously. <laughs> I think that's the smart move. Um, finally, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't at least ask uh, about any sort of look towards the future. Obviously, it seems like you're always busy uh, assigning Taskbot a new task. Uh, any possibility of sharing any details on what the next task might be? Or, or I don't want to spoil it too much, but uh, we'd like to do something that involves space. At a certain point, you just can't go up any farther, and we've reached that point. We're like, where, where can we go next? So the next yeah. idea is, well, can we go to space? So we're going to try to do something that incorporates a satellite. I'll leave it at that. If there are any folks wow. from Hackasat that want to join us, uh, feel free to get involved. We've already had some contact with some folks already. Uh, we would do this totally with the permission of NASA. We're not going to do anything silly, but hey, shoot for the moon. I'm not going to shoot the moon, but we're going to shoot for it. No, please don't. Um, <laughs> now, having said that, if we're always looking for ideas. And the, the primary place where we all connect, if I may throw a little bit of a, hey, come join us. Uh, the primary sure. place we connect is uh, discord.gg slash taskbot. If you look up taskbot on the Discord, uh, in the Discord website, uh, you'll find our community is, that's the center place where we do all of our development. We're always looking for new people to come in and give us ideas, work on projects. We don't need any particular skill. So many people that come in have total imposter syndrome that, because they can yeah. only do graphics or they can only do sound or they can only write things. And uh, don't let that stop you. Come, come on in, join us. It's a very friendly community. Uh, we will gladly get you on board and have you help us with the new things that are happening next. 
I love it. I love what you're doing, Alan. And uh, I appreciate you taking time telling us all about it. And uh, obviously, it's doing good for the world as well as just being is. You know, this really is... fun, geeky stuff. So, love yeah, it. Yeah, this has now hit a level of we have now raised over $1.3 million for various charities as a result of Taskbot content over the course of the last six, seven years. And Holy really, no. it's a huge team of folks. That, it wasn't just me. I might have been the main presenter and the executive producer of the Triforce Percent Run we showed. But man, I got to tell you, there are so many other people behind the scenes that make this happen. Uh, so this is just a great community that's done some really amazing things for charity and I couldn't be happier with what we're doing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for hopping on today. Uh, gettriforce.link is uh, probably the site that you can go to, to to find out more information about what we've talked about. Uh, if people want to follow you online, where can they find you? You can find me as Dwango AC. That's D W A N G O A C at YouTube on Twitch when I'm able to stream. Uh, but if you just look up Taskbot, I, I am Dwango AC, keeper of Taskbot. You'll definitely find me. And by far the best place to connect, just head on over to discord.gg slash Taskbot. We'd love to have you. There you go. Thank you, Alan. We'll, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon <laughs> in the neighborhood. Thanks so much.